In previous videos, we've learned how to write the equilibrium constant expression, which is a way to determine the value of the equilibrium constant. Now, let's look at an example of how to actually find the value of the equilibrium constant. To begin with, we need to know the equilibrium concentrations of the products and the reactants. So for example, if we're looking at the solvation equilibrium of acetic acid in water, which produces hydrogen ions and acetate ions, as long as we're given the equilibrium concentrations of acetic acid, the hydrogen ion, and the acetate ion, we can plug those equilibrium values into the equilibrium constant expression to determine a numerical value for the equilibrium constant for this system. In this problem, given the equilibrium values of 1.65 times 10 to the minus 2 molar for the acetic acid, 5.44 times 10 to the minus 4th molar for both the hydrogen ion and the acetate ion, when we plug those into the equilibrium constant expression, we find that the equilibrium constant for the solvation of acetic acid has a value of 1.79 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now that problem was kind of fun, but it was a little too easy for us because the equilibrium concentrations were already given to us. In many situations, we will not know the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. We might know some of the initial concentrations and maybe one of the equilibrium concentrations, but because we're chemists, we can use what we know about stoichiometry to determine the equilibrium concentrations of all of the species present. We do this using what's known as an ice table, where ice stands for initial, change, and equilibrium. In order to use the ice table, you need to first tabulate all the known initial and equilibrium concentrations that are given in the problem. For any of the species where we have an initial and an equilibrium concentration given, we can then calculate the change in the concentration from initial to equilibrium. The most important step is to now use what we know about stoichiometry to find how much each of the other species will change by. Finally, once we know the initial and the change values, we can now calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the other species that were not given to us at the beginning of the problem. Let's look at an example of how to use an ice table to calculate the equilibrium constant for a system. In this problem, we're given the initial concentrations of hydrogen and iodine, and we're also given the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen iodide. We're asked to determine the value of the equilibrium constant. Since we only know one equilibrium concentration, that of the hydrogen iodide, we need to determine the equilibrium concentrations of the other two species, the hydrogen and the iodine. We begin the problem by first setting up the ice table and tabulating the initial and the equilibrium concentrations that are given to us in the problem. Once we do that, we see that we have initial concentration of hydrogen of 1.00 times 10 to the minus 3, an initial concentration of iodine of 2.00 times 10 to the minus 3, and an equilibrium concentration of 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3. Since we're not given the initial concentration of the hydrogen iodide and the hydrogen iodide is the product, we're going to assume that the initial concentration of the hydrogen iodide is zero. Now that we've tabulated the initial and the equilibrium concentrations for everything given to us in the problem, we can identify any of those species that have both an initial and an equilibrium value. In this case, we have an initial and an equilibrium value for hydrogen iodide. That allows us to calculate the change in the concentration of the hydrogen iodide, since it started at zero and it increased to 1.87 times 10 to the minus third, the change for the hydrogen iodide must be 1.87 times 10 to the minus third molar. Now that we know the change in the hydrogen iodide concentration, we can use what we know about stoichiometry using the mole ratios of the reactants and products to calculate the change in the iodine and the hydrogen concentrations. Since hydrogen iodide has a two to one mole ratio with the iodine, the change in the iodine concentration is going to be half what the change in the hydrogen iodide was. At the same time, 
the hydrogen iodide has a two to one mole ratio with a hydrogen. So the hydrogen concentration will also change by half the amount that a hydrogen iodide change. This gives us change values for the hydrogen and the iodine of 9.35 times 10 to the negative fourth. Since both of these are reactants, that change is a decrease from their initial concentrations. So we put a negative sign for each of the reactants in the change row. Now that we know the initial and equilibrium values for the iodine and the hydrogen, we can add the initial and the change values to obtain the equilibrium values for each of these species. When we do that, we see that the equilibrium value for the hydrogen is 0.065 times 10 to the minus third molar. When we add the initial and the change values for the iodine, we get a value of 1.065 times 10 to the minus third molar. Now that we have all three equilibrium values, we can write the equilibrium constant expression, plug in the equilibrium concentrations, and determine the value of K. The equilibrium constant expression is going to be the hydrogen iodide concentration squared divided by the concentration of the hydrogen multiplied by the concentration of the iodine. Plugging in the values, we have 1.87 times 10 to the minus third squared divided by 0.065 times 10 to the minus third for hydrogen and 1.065 times 10 to the minus third for iodine. And when we calculate that, we get a value of 51 when we round to two significant figures. By now, you should be able to use equilibrium concentrations to calculate equilibrium constants. You should be able to describe how to use an ice table, including identifying which row of the ice table involves stoichiometry. You should be able to use an ice table to find the value of an equilibrium constant if given a few initial and equilibrium concentrations.